In 1979, West Indies arrived here as both defending champions and strong favourites in their stable were a collection of some of the finest cricketers ever to have played the game. And first amongst them was the incomparable Isaac Vivian Alexander Richards. It may sound like um, it's, a, it's a, a show-off sort of attitude, but I wanted to be shining on the big stage. That's where he remembered more, most. West Indies sizzled through the tournaments. Emphatic wins against New Zealand and India stood out. In the semi-final, they beat Pakistan by 43 runs. Viv Richards picked up three for 43 with his off breaks. But of course, the best was yet to come from the mighty Viv. The Nadia for us as always of that era and for many years afterwards, Vivian Richards. One of the most dominant players in world cricket during his time. A destroyer of bowling, a muscular figure, an imposing figure with a lot of presence who dominated this match in the biggest stage of all. England won the toss and chose to bowl first. In the early stages of the match, they seemed to have the West Indies by the throat. Viv Richards had come in at the fall of the first wicket and was still there at 99 for four. That was the point at which Collis King joined him. West Indies were in a bit of bother, 99 before, and but we thought that once Viv was at the crease, we had a chance. We didn't really expect the other person to really put the score on the board to be Collis King, because we know Collis can bat, yes, but the manner in which he got those runs again was also very important. Viv Richards, I think, was quite satisfied to try and bat through the entire 60 overs, as it was those days, it was 60 over cricket those days, and Collis pretty much took the attack apart. He outscored Viv in that partnership, which is Highly unusual, but he played a fantastic knock. I can remember Collis came in and, and just the way in which he started to belt the ball all past to the park. I'm saying to myself, hey, Kingdom, hey, you can get three figures on this man. Try and stay along. Try and hold on here, man. You can do it. And Kingdom just swung the bat. He ignored everything I was saying. And I was glad in a way because he did, he did it his way, you know. He was outscored by Collis King because and Viv said to him that I talked to Viv after uh, one or two uh, I have words with him uh, since he finished that World, since that World Cup. And I've often, I often said to him, you know, Collis played a magnificent knock. He said, yes, he was playing so well, so well that I let him have the reins, you know, I let him just take over, uh, uh, which he did, Sir Viv did. Uh, and uh, the, the rest is history, of course. Also, that um, maybe the cricket pundits felt that I was too um, proud to allow someone else to take over, because this was all about the team. This wasn't about the riches. The riches, I felt, taught them something that day, what team was all about. It wasn't about the aggressive style, and because someone is going hard at it at the other end, that he should be going also. It was about preserving the other end so that the guy who was going at the other end could do it, do it in style. And when, when we got out, so when he got out, I looked at the score and I said, well done, Kingdom. And anyone who would have seen the video, Collis King walking back to the pavilion, I was halfway to the pavilion, smacking my back like saying, hey, well done, mate, well done, mate. And I can remember that I ran off back to my batting position. Uh, the, the, the feeling of uh, being revived, being strong, and what I just saw, I was going to finish. There's always been something almost supernatural about Vivian Richards. He seems a force of nature. His batting was superb. He built and he built and the sum total of his efforts was 138 not out. But it was more than that. He'd imposed himself not just on the match but on England. Ah, King Viv. And what I certainly remember is Viv hitting the very last ball of the innings for six. He walked across his crease. Mike Hendrick tried to bowl a Yorker and he just flicked it over mid wicket for six and just strolled off the field. And at that point, when you can do something like that for the last ball of the innings, when you have so many runs on the board, that, that just lifted our spirits even more. The magnificent display of batting and run-making under pressure in a final. 
and enabling West Indies to set an imposing total in those days of 286. Viv Richards was undeniably brilliant, but Collis King was, well, quite spectacular. Of the 139 they made together for the fifth wicket, Kingdom Come, as they called him, made 86 of them, 86 of the most swashbuckling runs you'd ever see in any cricket match, let alone a World Cup final. England looked bloodied, bruised and beaten. They lurched to 194 all out. West Indies were world champions again and Viv had delivered the goods. Words just can't basically describe how you feel about that collective performance. You know, um, you you revered when you went home and came back to Antigua and Barbuda, and Andy Roberts and myself, we were from this island, and the roll of the Red Cat, what they would do for uh, uh, Her Royal Highness uh, Queen Elizabeth. You can't get any better than that. <laughs> 